Today, London is again a place that attracts many newcomers looking for education, work and the dynamics of urban life. The city is facing yet another housing crisis. Prices have exploded and people with low or even middle incomes are forced to move out of the city. This urgent housing crisis in London led to a political decision to start a project for a radical regeneration of Thamesmead, the failed ideal housing development of 1970. The arrival of Crossrail, a new major rail infrastructure project, which will reduce journey times into central London drastically, represented a major opportunity to start the regeneration of the Thamesmead South area. The city asked the Peabody Trust to step in, taking over the property and land from another failing housing corporation. The Trust developed a strategy based on a radical rebuilding of substantial parts of the estate, increasing three times the former density, making it possible to subsidize the replacement of the original housing by an equal number of new affordable homes with the profits gained from the additional number of housing for the free market. Consultation with the residents played a key role and made it possible to get the planning permit approved without resistance. The regeneration of Thamesmead South is taking off with a complete rebuilding of the central part with commercial and public facilities and the north-south spine blocks. The iconic spine blocks were sadly in such a bad state that renovation proved both technically and economically not feasible. The new project will provide a new urban structure for the area, characterized by a series of connected public squares, streets and courtyards, articulated by a cohesive composition of clusters of buildings, a rich mix of functions and a variety of dwelling types. The new design, in which I was involved as one of the principal architects, has been inspired by the Trust's legacy of the Peabody buildings, housing clustered around courtyards in various ways, with a now much stronger mix of unit types and sizes. The structure of the new ensembles or clusters around courtyards allows for the integration of existing housing that can still be saved from demolition. The project will not create another disconnected enclave, or a new autonomous megastructure, but a carefully inserted new layer over the existing historic layers of landscape and previous patterns of housing. The result will be a palimpsest, a new urban pattern in which parts of the old patterns remain visible, creating a strongly layered and anchored sense of place. While working on the Thamesmead project, I studied together with colleagues and students from Delft and students and researchers from Ethiopia, the housing challenges in another part of the world, in Addis Ababa. The parallels between what is happening now in the capital of Ethiopia and what happened in the last 160 years in London are significant. The immense poverty and lack of resources that characterized especially the later years of the period of communist dictatorship in Ethiopia between 1974 and 1991 had a major impact on the appearance of the capital city and its housing. The city's neighborhoods, the so-called Sefers, that had developed organically over time around the palaces of the feudal rulers, turned into densely inhabited areas. Within the boundaries of existing houses, mostly confiscated and nationalized by the regime, people erected makeshift clusters of small temporary dwellings, turning the Sefers into informal settlements in which the original palaces and houses were encroached upon and often subdivided to finally disappear in a visual sea of corrugated iron and wattle and daub walls. Addis ended up, at the moment of the fall of the Derg regime in 1991, in being a sprawling capital city consisting for almost 90% of informal housing. After the liberation and formation of the new Federal Republic of Ethiopia, it took more than 10 years for the country and the city to recover and create resources for a new period of urban reconstruction and extension. To start the very urgent process of creating decent housing for the urban population, the Ethiopian government initiated in 2004 the Integrated Housing Development Program, also known as the Grand Housing Program. It had a series of objectives, 
next to creating housing for lower and middle income households and providing space for small enterprises, it would create many new jobs in construction and promote home ownership. A standard housing type was conceived in a collaboration of local architects and German engineers. The result was named the condominium building. In a period of less than 15 years, a very large number of condominiums was built in the city. The standard that can be found all over the city is a four or five story slab block with an access gallery to five or six dwelling units on each floor. This one type solution, repeated at many sites across the city, shows at the first glance an almost uncanny resemblance to the Peabody buildings of more than 150 years before. However, the emphasis on economy of building and a disregard for issues of maintenance and the quality of the applied materials and detailing is achieving a very different result. Besides this, the design hardly considers the everyday domestic practices and means of income generation of the intended inhabitants. The ways of clustering of the condominium blocks lead to undefined in-between spaces and the scale of the projects lead to anonymity. One can only hope that over time, by processes of appropriation and adaptation, the condominiums will become a more integrated part of the city of Addis Ababa, a city still characterized by the coexistence of formal and informal fabric, of planned street patterns overlaying older organic networks, a city of compounds and of collective spaces. In the comparison of these cases from London and Addis Ababa, a multitude of aspects of designing affordable housing come clearly forward. To be successful and sustainable, the architectural project needs to take into account not only aspects of economy and building technology, of ownership and participation, but has to address many other issues as well, such as ways of urban clustering, to create clearly defined and useful in-between spaces and good connectivity to the city as a whole, strategies of mixing dwelling types and groups of inhabitants to create diverse and inclusive communities, and implementing possibilities of adaptation to changing needs and lifestyles over time. The design of housing is the most fundamental architectural challenge of our time. The different case studies of this online course will be explored as a way to understand the complexities of the architecture of housing, identifying the many aspects of housing design and how they can be brought together in a project. This will be a starting point to develop one's own position and to design architectural projects that can deliver good and affordable housing, creating in our cities a humane habitat for all.